Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel, Creep Designs by Twitch. Or if you've been here before or been here from the start, welcome back, legends. Anyway, um, doing something that's going to be a little bit painful today. Um, I've had this piece sitting for way longer than I would prefer, and it's going to be excruciating because I put so much work into it. Um, and a lot of people have loved it, but it's just not selling. And I'll explain why and you will understand once you see which piece it is. Alright, I can't actually get to it properly right now, but Big Red is over there, still unsold, and I will explain why I think it hasn't sold yet. Okay, so one of the first things that I think has contributed to it not selling let me turn the fan off uh, sorry it is up on dollies at the moment but that only lifts it up like that much so this is me standing at the back of it I, I'm not exactly a short ass but you know I, that's it's huge and a lot of people don't want things that big like it's it's cumbersome um, I got the got the piece for free so I'm not complaining but I didn't realize um, how tall it was gonna be once the top part was attached um, so you know it's a hard sell uh, the other thing is the top doesn't come off so because of how much damage there was to the part that sit the parts that sit on the top surface of the drawers I had to attach it permanently with dowel plugs so it's all glued together and doesn't come apart um, I've had a couple of people message me and ask me about it and whether the top comes off and I've had to say no it doesn't so I think that's been a contributor to it not selling um, so I will be taking the top off permanently it's just not gonna go with it anymore so if anyone wants it it's yours because I don't want to throw it out um, so another factor I think is the fact that it's red so it's a very out there color and isn't going to go with a lot of um, aesthetics and it's unfortunate because it's it just came up so bloody beautiful um, probably wouldn't have been such an issue on a smaller piece but because of everything else like the size of it and everything I think it makes it a bit of a harder sell um, what else uh, it's kind of goes along with the size of it as well but it is heavy it is like it's so heavy I haven't had this thing off the dollies since it arrived here because I just it, it won't come off like it is oh no I did take it off once um, to put it on smaller dollies and I just about killed myself and just about broke my back lifting it off the dollies it is so bloody heavy um, so all of that together I think is why it's not selling um, so I'm just going to bite the bullet and redo it again in a simpler style and hopefully then it will sell. Anyway, let's get going. Okay, so when I took that back part off, um, I didn't realise there were two screws in here. I thought I'd taken them all out, but they were like sunken in really deep. Um, and I've managed to rip the heads off the screws. 
because I'm that strong. But this is a perfect opportunity for me to show you something that I've seen in a, I think it was a TikTok video, um, to remove screws that have lost their head or whatever. Um, so I've got my drill and I'm gonna chuck it in reverse. And I'll make that a bit smaller. And as you can see, it's got nothing in it. So I just chuck it on like that. And this is me testing it for the first time, by the way. So we'll see if this works together. Together. Try and get it in the middle. Tighten it. Wow. <laughs> so it works. Okay, so I recently posted on Facebook that I was looking at getting a belt sander and one of my subscribers and who I would consider a good friend offered to give me this Ryobi battery operated belt sander. She also said that if I don't like it I can sell it and get something else or whatever. Um, absolutely lovely of her. This is me testing it out. I tested it on something else first and then used it on this um, but my battery went dead flat halfway through so I then swapped over to my prep mate to orbital sander and I was using 80 grit sandpaper During the last makeover of this piece, I used Bondo or Builder's Bog or whatever you want to call it to fill these gaps and I'm taking it out because it didn't take the stain very well and this time I'm using Timbermate Wood Putty in the colour Walnut. Alright, quick update. Um, I've left, I'm leaving as much of the boring stuff out as I can. So top is all sanded back. Um, I still need to go down another grit on this and I'm waiting for the putty to dry so that's going to stay overnight to make sure it's completely dry all the way through. Um, I took all of the handles off and put them aside because I'll be using the same handles. I have scuff sanded all over, I don't think I really needed to do that but I was more so checking to see if I had wax to remove because I can't remember if I waxed it. Um, and just in case I did, I've gone over it and given everything a good clean with mineral terps just to get off any remaining wax that might be on there and she's all good and ready to go. So I'm going to set up for spraying tomorrow because it is almost time to go home. So I'm going to get that ready to go in the morning so we can get straight into it. Okay, so it is the next day and I'm ready to start spraying. Okay, so it is the next day and I'm ready to start spraying and this is what I'm going to be using. So I've been keen to try this for a while now and um, Michelle from Mint by Michelle was lovely enough to send me some of her colours and this is one of them. So it is bushwalking. So it's a really nice, looks like a really nice, um, rich kind of dark olive green color. Um, and I think that's going to work really well on this. So let's get into it and I'll let you know what I think of this paint.
Okay, so I had a little trouble at first with my spraying. I think the main issue, the only issue was the fact that I maybe didn't clean it out properly, properly last time. Um, so it wasn't spraying very well and as you can see it's still kind of missing a beat here and leaving gaps which is why I'm going over it a couple of times. It was bugging me but I just ignored it this time around, got the first coat down and then fixed the problem. Alright, the second coat went on so much better. First of all I emptied the paint out gave everything a really good clean, put the paint back in and I actually added a bit of water to the paint and gave it a really good stir to thin it down a little bit and it seemed to go through the spray gun a hell of a lot better. My first thoughts on Mint by Michelle's paint is it feels durable, the colours are absolutely gorgeous, um, it feels amazing and it's just overall a really nice paint. To hit the edges of the drawers, I taped off the sides a bit and taped off the hinge, uh, not the hinge, the little lock bit on the that sits on the top. Anyway, um, and I used a piece of floorboard and a piece of plywood just to kind of protect the insides of the drawers and the sides of the drawers from the spray gun, and it worked fine. Also, I was a little concerned about how these draw liners from the previous look would go, but it looks really good, doesn't it? Now it's time for me to work on the top, but I want to protect my freshly painted base. So I'm basically going to unfold the plastic from the top, peel it off, flip it around, and then stick it back on to the painted surface. First thing I had to do was sand down all that putty that had been left over not to dry. The product I'm using on the top is a stain and varnish by Unique Options in the colour Gumnut. I have no idea if they still sell this or not, I still haven't checked. Um, but. It was a bit on the dark side for me for the look I was going for, so I've just decanted some into a coffee jar and adding some Cuts and Millie clear coat to it just to thin it down a bit. And before anyone jumps down my throat in the comments, I can do this because A, I want to, and B, they're both water-based products. So I'm using one of my Unipro chalk brushes to apply this and it goes on absolutely beautiful. Like, it kind of feels a bit like an oil based stain and it's got the richness of an oil based stain um, but it moves a lot smoother and it doesn't feel so sticky and gross. So the top surface did dry kind of weird and it had a lot of stops and starts from the um, using the brush. So this time I'm using a Too Fussy Blex roller and I'm just using some tape to remove any fluff. And the edges are fine. You don't notice anything on the edges so I'm just going to be rolling the top. But before rolling it I just gave it a quick smooth sand just to get rid of any noticeable marks and just going over it with one coat with the roller. It went on heaps better this way and as you can see the colour is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I was a little worried that it was going to stain this roller but I went and washed it using Alice's Wonders brush soap and it came up like crisp and white and like it was brand new so no staining at all.
So quick reminder of what she looked like before. And here she is now. You wouldn't even believe this was the exact same piece. It looks so vastly different, it just blows my mind. When I posted on my socials that I was going to be redoing Big Red, a lot of people were upset because they absolutely loved it, and so did I. But hopefully you guys will love this piece just as much, if not more. This piece also only took me two days to finish because all of the hard work had been done previously. Um, so two days of extra work and hopefully now what will be a quick sale will make up for how long it's been sitting there. I know redoing pieces really isn't something that we like having to do, but sometimes it is worth it. For all products used, don't forget to check the description of this video, as well as my buy me a coffee link and my Amazon wishlist. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.